Welcome, everybody, to our next session with Josh Lifton, the CEO of Crowd Supply. Um, it's going to be a very interesting conversation. We're going to be able to ask him kind of a ton of questions after he goes through a brief presentation uh, about uh, his company and, and kind of creating successful um, successful deployments. Um, bringing hardware to the market is the title of this, this discussion. So, Josh, welcome, and uh, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, why don't you go ahead and give yourself a quick introduction, give some background to our audience, talk a little bit about CrowdSupply, and then we'll get into your uh, presentation. Sure. So um, I'm the co-founder and president of CrowdSupply. Uh, we're a crowdfunding platform for open source hardware. It's the shortest way to say it. Um, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is work with engineers uh, to bring their product ideas to market. Um, we help them with everything from media asset production and funding to fulfillment and ongoing sales. Uh, so we've seen, you know, my job is basically to look at people's ideas and, and projects ideas. Many of them are IoT related, many of those Laura related, uh, and help them flesh out how to, how to launch it into the world and get it into people's hands. Very cool. Um, so I have a quick presentation. I'm just going to dive into that, and then I'll leave plenty of room for, uh, for questions afterward. Um, so uh, a lot of people ask me what it is that, um, it, what's the secret sauce, I guess? Uh, how do we make successful products or help people make them? And so here's my, my top 10 list, right, for launching a bunch of products every year. We do about, um, we do more than 50 products a year, uh, it might be closer to 100 this year. Um, so, like I said, CrowdSupply is, is a platform, it's a website, you can go to crowdsupply.com and check it out. Uh, it's meant for people to launch their, their products, and it's also meant for people to buy those products, both when they're first released and, and an, on an ongoing basis. Um, on the crowdfunding side, we kind of set ourselves apart uh, just because we're, we're so hands-on that our success rate and our funding uh, per project are the highest out there. And what we pride ourselves most on, of course, is actually delivering products to customers. And so far, we've had a 100% success rate um, getting products to uh, that have received funding from us to, to their customers. Um, there's a very small minority of those that we have to refund, um, but even then, the refund happens um, because the, the person couldn't make enough or uh, couldn't get them to the, the backer in time. So as an engineer, you would like CrowdSupply for three main reasons. Um, and here's a quick overview of a, one of our projects, the Lambda STR Mini. Um, obviously, a lot of people come to us for the money. Uh, they need that first batch of funds to uh, produce um, uh, the, the very first run of, of these products. Um, and without that, they're, they can't get anywhere. So unlike software, you know, making shipping uh, uh, atoms around the world costs money. Um, second reason is, and probably the bigger reason in the end, is market validation. Um, so the money is a form of market validation, of course, but so is the press that you get, so are the, the kind of uh, big sponsors you get. This, in this example, the European Space Agency um, backed the Lime SDR Mini, and of course just the sheer number of people. Um, so this had, at, at the close of uh, the crowdfunding, um, had over 4,000 um, uh, pledges. And then finally, um, in the long term, you know, launching a product is one thing, but actually keeping it available and, and uh, selling it on an ongoing basis is actually where you, you make your money. Um, and that's something that uh, we really help with. We're usually the first reseller of, of a product that launches on crowd supply. We'll place an order right after it gets funded and try to maintain that availability continuously. Um, and that really isn't reflected in, in the funding numbers here. Uh, we've sold much more than $700,000 of this product uh, since it's launched, and you know, we're about to actually put in another order um, this week, I think. Uh, so that's why engineers like us, um, our methodology is, is a lot of uh, kind of Lessons learned the hard way in many ways. We've been in business um, over seven years now and launched hundreds and hundreds of, of campaigns. Um, so here are some of the, the, the heuristics and, and tactics that we use. Uh, I'll just run through these real quick. 
So first, um, in product land, uh, the minimum viable product, the MVP, right, is really your minimum order quantity. So MVP equals MOQ, right? The, the, what you need to do is get some products made and shipped. So what's the minimum number that you can make um, economically speaking and, and logistically speaking and then ship out to, uh, to customers? Um, here are two examples. I won't go into these examples in, in great detail, but you know the Morpheus product, uh, they already had a, a few made when they came to us, so the minimum order was zero, essentially. Circuit stickers, on the other hand, they needed to set up an entire production line, and um, so the minimum order quantity was, was a bit higher. Um, number two is that uh, for the purposes of, of crowdfunding and getting that initial marketing push, having a, a product that addresses a niche market is actually much better than having a product that addresses a mass market. The reason being, in a niche market, if you tell a single person about the product, they're well connected with all the other um, uh, possible customers. And so word spreads very quickly, and you can do content marketing as opposed to, to paid advertising um, for, for many of these products. In this example, the USB Armory is a, you know, a very specific product for information security professionals. Um, and they were all talking about it when it launched. We didn't need to do, uh, uh, go far beyond that. Number three is that cold hard cash from sales is worth so much more than venture capital from investment. Um, sure, there's the non-dilutive aspect of sales, but it's also just a, a immediate uh, validation that, that people like your idea. Um, so here are some examples of uh, two other Lime campaigns by the same company that did the Lime SDR that I showed earlier uh, that have, have done well and, and proved these products using sales rather than, than investment. Number four is that um, it, it's very true that, that uh, ideas are a dime a dozen, and I think they're actually worth less than that. Um, you can have a great idea, and it doesn't matter at all, right, if you don't execute well on it. Um, similarly, you can have a, an, an idea that, that's been had before, and you just do, you execute it so well that, that you're successful. Um, so here's, here are two examples of that, right? Like a, a, a dev board for an ESP32 is not a new idea, but TinyPico did an amazing job of, of execution and really blew it out of the water. This is one of our, our top selling products uh, by volume. Um, similarly, Hestu Pi Touch is a, is a smart thermostat. Um, there are plenty of those already, uh, but they made a, a, a good splash with the open source nature and, and privacy protecting part of it. So they executed it really well. Number five um, is that earned content is better than paid ads, uh, at least for, for crowdfunding stuff. Sure, there's, there's a place for paid ads and there always will be, but uh, for a niche product um, that you're just launching via crowdfunding, it's so much better to spend your energy and, and money and resources creating uh, good content that people will appreciate and learn about your product from than paying and monitoring um, uh, for ads. Um, and that's because earned content is, is, you know, people don't consider it an ad. It's, it's like I said, it's, you earn that, that attention. You don't pay for it. And these are, the, both of these products are good examples. The Novena and the High Five Unleashed were great examples of, of uh, content that, that uh, got people's attention to the product. Number six is that um, you know, even though there are many naysayers and, and trolls out there, especially as you edge in closer to consumer grade products like these two, like the Pocket Spray and the, the Ultimate Hacking Keyboard, um, what matters is delivery. And that, that the only way to crush a troll is to actually deliver on your product and deliver on your promises. Um, uh, which both of these did uh, uh, very well. Um, so delivery is number one, and that is the best way to avoid a customer support disaster. Number seven um, is that you could try to launch a product without a plan uh, for how it's going to be successful, both the launch and, and selling it afterward. But the chances of you being successful are probably less than if you just bought a lottery ticket. And so you're better off just buying a lottery ticket if that's your plan. 
Um, however, if you have a, a good plan and you execute it well, then your, your chances of success, it's not really a chance anymore, it's just a matter of execution. Um, uh, here are examples of, of very well executed campaigns, I'd say, both in the, the planning and the, the production of the product itself. Uh, they had good testing, they had good supply chains, they had a clearly defined market, and it was all planned out. Um, and if you had that plan, there shouldn't be any surprises. Number eight uh, is that happy users uh, are those that feel like they have their rights retained. And so at Crowd Supply, we have the, the proclamation of user rights is what we call it. Um, here's a very uh, one, one word description of each of these rights. You can read more about it on the website. But basically the idea is that you are treating your customers with respect, uh, respecting their privacy, their security, their ownership. Um, you're making a product that, that they actually want to have and that, will, that was not just going to be obsolete right away. Um, and that they have uh, true ownership of that in the sense they can talk about it, they can share it, they can uh, uh, modify it. Um, and, and find out how it works. So these are all things that are important to users, and it goes a long way to, um, to building that initial user base and, and that goodwill. Number nine is that, uh, similar to what I just mentioned um, or about user rights, that open source for crowdfunding is a much better play than, than intellectual property. Um, if you are, that's not to say that intellectual property doesn't have a place in the world, it certainly does, but if you're crowdfunding as your, your initial go-to-market then and you're relying on intellectual property as, as your main, uh, you're holding onto that as, as your main value, then there's probably something not quite uh, aligned correctly. Um, being open source, there are so many advantages to it um, from customer support to, uh, to um, building up that initial community and evangelism about your product. Uh, I can go on and on about that. And that's why we encourage all of our all of our launches to to have a strong as strong as possible uh, open source bent. And finally, um, you know, there's a, a lot to be said for automation and filling out forms and getting approval that way uh, and checking boxes. But for something as complicated as launching a product uh, that's new to a market you may not understand, um, you know, there's nothing replaces interpersonal interaction. And because we, we launch products from all over the world, we can't meet with anyone in person, although we like we like to and we can. Uh, so there's a lot of phone calls and, and chats and, and whatnot uh, between real people at CrowdSupply and, and our creators. Um, and that's, that's part of the process of launching with us. So that's the quick overview of what we do and how we've been successful in launching products. Um, happy to take any questions about anything I just mentioned or anything I didn't mention either also. Great. Great. Thanks, Josh. That was great. Um, wonderful to kind of learn about what you all are doing and different kind of projects going on on your end. Um, first question we have um, is, are there any developments or trends that you've been seeing with different hardware projects that are going through CrowdSupply? Yeah. Uh, there's. I'd say we, we see things about three years before the broader market. Um, we see trends. Uh, so we saw you know, our first FPGA dev board was in 2015, I think. Um, and that ju that's just exploded, for example. Um, you know, uh, similarly kind of embedded edge um, compute and, and you know, so-called machine learning or AI. Uh, saw that a, a lot uh, before it hit the mainstream. Uh, of course, I have I personally been in, in kind of distributed sensor networks and, and IoT for, for quite a while back, back in academia and, and and we see that here as well. Right? Um, we've had some LoRa, LoRa projects, um, and then I think the uh, another big trend that, that is about to hit is um, alternative uh, alternative processor architectures. So alternative ISAs to and specifically RISC V. Um, there are others. You know, there's there's Power Ten or Power Nine, I guess. Um, uh, but RISC V has been very popular with our audience. So there's a, the technologies that, that are up and coming, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Um, so what projects usually do the best or on the platform, and what, which ones kind of do the worst from your experience? Well, I guess it depends what you mean by best and worst. Uh, I mean, there's the um, obvious, like... You know, achieve their goals, or have been you know, 
goals, and then one maybe you know just just t- from a trend standpoint, just just continually do not meet the the you know the expectation I guess they were expecting. Right. Um, that that's fairly straightforward. I think it's it's folks who think it's going to be easy and that their idea carries carries the weight itself, right? Which it doesn't. And I kind of mentioned that. Right. Um, right. You know, there's a, a pretty brutal wake up call uh, when that happens, and we we try to filter for that. We vet every project, and so if we do our job, then uh, no one launches with those mismatched expectations. Um, right. Those that do best have spent a lot of time cultivating and interacting with their community, and mm-hmm. and put out a lot of updates during the campaign and afterward. So so take me through when somebody posts a project on their a product they're looking to get funded. How, what is your involvement from that early stage of mm-hmm. them wanting to be involved all the way through to when the product's being sold? So what does that look like? Yeah, uh, it, it varies depending on the product, but uh, okay. yeah, some, some people come to us a year or two before they actually launch. And right. they might not know that it's going to be that long, but um, we'll tell them, hey, you're not ready yet. We're really interested in this, but you have to do these things. And they go off and do them and then come back and you know, we'll interact with them during that time. And we'll have our pre-launch page up, then they can uh, garner interest that way. Um, but assuming that, that that's not the case, then from the time you come to us, to the time you launch, let's say it's a few weeks or a month, uh, potentially. And during that time, we're looking through the financials, like we're looking at the bill materials, we're looking at the pricing, making sure that if you are intend to resell to other, other distributors, for example, that the, there's enough margin in there for that. Um, your supply chain, uh, all the features. A lot of people have 20 SKUs when they should really have three. Okay. Right? Um, so it, it really is a, a process that is tailored to each project. And, it, and we kind of fill in the gaps where, where you may not have the capacity or, or knowledge for that. Um, there are other projects that come to us and their expectations are well aligned with what they can do and they just launch and that's fine. Um, so it's, it, it is a it is a uh, not a one size fits all by any means. Makes sense. And yeah. after the project is funded and it's developed and ready for sale, I saw that you have uh, the option for people to buy on the website directly. Yeah. But outside of that, what do you all do kind of to help? Because at least in most cases, you know, the people developing the hardware are probably brilliant individuals, you know, on the mm-hmm. engineering side. But when it comes to the marketing and the selling of the product, it's usually not always their forte. So right. where, how do you guys help on that side to get them um, actual sales and revenue? Yeah. Um, so the... You're right. Everyone we work with is a domain expert in the product they're making. But you're right. They may not be a sales or marketing or logistics person. Um, and oftentimes they they've been they're so deep in the weeds that they don't any longer know how to explain the value of what they're working on. Right. And they have 20 ideas, but only one of them is going to resonate with the person they're talking to, and they never get to it. And so what we do from a messaging perspective is kind of take a step back and say, okay, here's your main message. All these other ones are important, but this is the main one. Okay. Right? That, that's one thing we do. Another is, uh, because we've had a lot of experience working with, um, yeah, I know uh, Adam was just on, and, mm-hmm. and we've worked with Axter IO, we've worked with a bunch of other partners sure. um, to kind of showcase a lot of these, these projects. Um, and we know what resonates with, with those platforms and what will drive traffic for them. So we, we assist in that. We also do a lot of media asset production. So we'll actually do the videos and the photography a lot of the time. Um, and then, uh, you know, most importantly, after launch, you know, launching is great, but that's really just the beginning. You have potentially six weeks or so of content that you need to keep filled, right? Pipeline that you right. have to keep filled. So what, is that, what do those updates look like? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, uh, making suggestions there. Um, and then finally, you know, assuming it's successful, which it probably is, uh, we put in our order as soon as we can, right? We, our, our, we're so incentivized um, for the long-term success because that's where our revenue really is. You know, the, the small percentage that we get for crowdfunding does not cover our bills. Mm-hmm. It's the selling the things afterward that, right. that we're concerned with. Okay. Yeah. And you guys, for a lot of the, the different stages of the journey that a, a, um, a customer will come through, um, are you guys partnering with companies to help with that? I know you mentioned you have relationships with Hackstart.io and other other um, organizations, but which stages are you kind of doing in-house and which stages are you kind of working 
internally with with trusted partners? Yeah, it really depends on what what's needed. Uh, so I'll give you examples of what we have okay. done. Um, we've connected people and, and actually uh, helped manage um, uh, contract manufacturers. Uh, we have a provider directory that is filled with um, uh, vendors or third parties that have worked on real crowd supply projects that might help you with yours. So that could be a, a board house or assembly house, could be a marketing firm. Um, we help source uh, parts. So uh, we have close ties with Mauser Electronics and uh, Very cool. you know, if they, we can source your entire bomb through them at a discount, then great. Um, uh, but we're also happy to work with whatever system you have already set up. So, um, and then if you wanted to do uh, you know, media production that's beyond our capabilities, which are mm -hmm. frankly fairly straightforward and, and, and basic, sure. then we have, we have that too, that we can point to people. Yeah. So it's now you know you've probably obviously seen tons of different products go through the entire development life cycle um, on the hardware side. So what are some of the biggest challenges during that life cycle or common pitfalls that may be worth kind of mentioning to those out there that are interested in getting involved in in crowd supply or building hardware in general that you've yeah. kind of learned from just seeing this in in excess? Yeah, I think that there's a a very clear um, clear step functions right. There's and these are, these are 10 times, each step is 10 times harder than the previous step. So there's, there's the person that has no idea, and then there's the person who has an idea. And it's 10 times harder to have an idea than not to. Yes. And then you, if you have the idea, uh, and assuming it's good, it's 10 times harder to actually make a prototype, mm -hmm. right? And then once you have the prototype, it's 10 times harder to make that first production run, right? Which is really where that's our sweet spot is, is that first production run. And then that's once true. you've done the first production run, it's 10 times harder to keep it in production on an ongoing basis, right? And most people, if they get there, they're, they're happy. Um, but then they start thinking about other products. And so then it's 10 times harder to maintain your initial product and have a new product come out. Uh, and so each of the, like, it's exponentially harder along those ways, along each step. But, um, uh, and we've seen people fail at every single one of those steps. Gotcha. Great. As we um, kind of wrap up here, uh, last question I have for you is if somebody out there, uh, one of the listeners now or in the future wants to get involved and be, you know, has a, has hardware they're developing at, you know, in their own location and they're looking for support, what's the best way to do that? I um, mean, you know, how do they get started? Yeah. So uh, you can fill out our, our submission form anytime. Um, if you want to kind of kick the tires and, and talk to some creators or us directly, you can join our Discord server. Uh, which I think is in, our, in the Flutter we have a Discord server, which we just launched uh, a few weeks ago and has a few hundred people already. Um, and of course, you know, just take a look at, at what's on the site. And if something resonates with you, uh, keep that in the back of your head when, when you talk to us. Very cool. All right, yeah. Josh, well, we appreciate your time, man. This has been great. Great learning yeah. about what CrowdSupply has going on. And um, I'm sure there'll be more questions coming through in the in the chat. So feel free to jump over there and just you know answer any questions that come through. But thanks right. again for your time and enjoy the rest of the conference and your week. Great. Likewise. Take care. You too.